So today I will be talking about snapping hip syndrome, also called dancer's hip. So snapping hip syndrome or coccyx sultans, which is Latin for dancer's hip, is when there is an audible or palpable sensation of snapping or popping in the hip that occurs during movement. It can be external or internal and is often accompanied by other hip problems, especially cartilage problems. It can also be accompanied by the feeling that the femoral head is going to sublux from the acetabular socket, also known as lateral dislocation. So here is a sound that can typically be heard in an individual who has snapping hip. So external snapping hip is when the snapping comes from the outside or lateral side of the hip joint. There are two forms of external snapping hip, one occurring with the iliotibial band or IT band and the other with the hamstring tendon. IT band snapping is the most common type and occurs when the tendon passes over the greater trochanter of the femur. If this band is tight, it creates a snapping sound or feeling as it moves from posterior to anterior in the hip. The hamstring tendon is the least common type seen and occurs as the tendon moves across the ischial tuberosity. Pictured is a sonographic evaluation of external snapping hip, and the arrows point to where the hip is inflamed at. So internal snapping hip also has two forms that can occur. The first occurs with the rectus femoris tendon with its movement back and forth across the femoral head. The other seen is with the iliopsoas tendon, which occurs as the tendon moves over the underlying bony prominences in the hip. This type of snapping hip can also be referred to as iliopsoas syndrome in some cases. Additionally, hip problems are found to accompany snapping hip syndrome, both internal and external, but typically is more seen with the internal snapping hip. And again, inflammation is what the arrows are pointing at there. So, picture here are images of frontal and anterior labral tears of the hip. You can see cartilage problems are pretty common with snapping hip syndrome. There's tears and the lining of the labrum causing the snapping sensation. It can also cause a feeling of the hip to catch or lock up. While this isn't a true snapping hip, it has a similar feeling and symptoms and the pain is typically deeper in this time with this. Sometimes the snapping felt in the hip can be painless, but the more it occurs, the more likely pain is to develop as the tendon becomes more inflamed. So you'll see this a lot with repetitive extreme motions such as that are common with ballet dancers, weightlifters, soccer players, runners, and it is often called dancer's hip because it is seen most often with dancers. So causes of snapping hip syndrome can vary depending on the person, but it is most commonly seen in dancers, hence the name dancer's hip. This comes from the excessive turnout position that dancers constantly are in, as seen by the dancer pictured here. Also, with the combination of the excessive abduction with the external rotation, this type of position seen and movement through this range of motion puts a lot of stress on the hip joint and its ligaments and tendons especially, and is why dancers are at such a risk. So the inflammation of the hip is usually easily diagnosable by a health professional as the pain or inflammation that is being felt can be verbalized as to severity and location. An orthopedist can do a range of motion and movement test to determine more internally spots of irritation and can recommend physical therapy to the patient to try to calm down the tissues in the surrounding hip before trying other treatment. Depending on the severity of pain, the doctor may also recommend taking and anti-inflammatory such as ibuprofen and may even prescribe a prescription strength if deemed necessary. Typically at an initial appointment an x-ray will be done as well by the ability to only see bone structure well on x-rays. This helps to immediately rule out any possible healing fractures that may be present 
from, say, falling, or in the case of, say, soccer players, a collision with another player. An MRI may be held off on, depending on the doctor's protocols, until they see how physical therapy helps, due to the cost of an MRI. And if great improvement is seen with just doing physical therapy, then there is no need for further imaging. So here's an x-ray of the hips. So here the extra bone growth can be seen on the left femoral head, just to the outside where the acetabulum sits. As can be seen from this image, the state of the hip is hard to tell as x-ray does not show soft tissue well. And this image is from the National Hip Institute, which is now National Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center. So all of these photos here come from imaging done of my hip hips prior to hip surgery in back in January and the spots of white fluorescence that can be seen are where there are tears in the labrum and that is inflammation so there are those white spots so here we have a lateral CT view of the left hip this is a bilateral MRI top-down view this here is a superior MRI view. Here we have a superior MRI view that's deep. This is also uh, just another version of this picture here. This is a lateral view and then this one is also a lateral view. So just a couple images there. So it is common to see other diagnoses accompanying snapping hip syndrome, especially with dancers. The image here shows some of the anatomy of the hip, especially the bursa, which are common sites of accompanying inflammation in the hip. And then a word you might not recognize here is synovitis, which is inflammation, swelling, and pain of a synovial membrane, in this case, in the hip. So it is commonly seen to accompany any of the other diagnoses here, along with snapping hip syndrome. So as far as treatment goes, when there is no pain in the hip, then there is little to no treatment done. In the case of bilateral problems of the hip, while one hip may look worse on imaging, treatment occurs in order of whichever side feels worse. It is based more on how the hip feels and less on how it looks. Pictured on the right here is the type of ice sleeve that is commonly seen being used in physical therapy clinics and when necessary. To have surgery after surgery. It is a compressive type of ice therapy that wraps around the waist and the affected hip and thigh and attaches to a hose here at the bottom and pumps ice cold water from a machine filled with ice water. This type of treatment has shown to help reduce the amount of recovery time and help with healing as it does the action of both compression and ice therapy at the same time. So, physical therapy can typically keep the patient from needing to have any type of surgical intervention and even from needing to have, say, corticosteroid injection as well, depending on the severity. The long axis hip distraction pictured in the background here is an example of the important manual therapy a physical therapist can perform to loosen up and relax tense muscles in the joint that may be compensating for damage and or inflammation. With long axis hip distraction, the therapist places their hands around the patient's ankle and provides a gentle to moderate pull of the leg, pull the femoral head from the acetabular socket. This type of stretch can also be done similarly at home with the patient lying on the side of a bed or a table and allowing their pain side to hang off and using gravity as the force of pull. So surgical intervention. The type of hip surgery is determined based on the severity of damage and inflammation in and surrounding the hip. It is much less common to see open hip surgery done for snapping hip syndrome. Typically, it is only seen with hip replacement surgery, which is a much more major surgery. Usually, surgery isn't done unless the individual has tried all of their options and has seen little to no improvement or has recurring problems with their hip. Especially this is seen in the case of people who have damage to other structures or congenital abnormalities such as extra bone growth. If a doctor knows what they are doing, surgery can be avoided until a last possible option. As before mentioned, 
There are, however, some doctors and surgeons who will recommend surgery too soon. And in those instances, the individual will likely end up having to have a corrective surgery done after the initial surgery due to improper pre-treatment of the surgery or just improper surgical performance. So with arthroscopic surgery, the number of incisions for this type of surgery depends on the severity of damage and or issues within and surrounding the hip joint. The typical amount of incisions is four to five, but can be as many as eight to 12 in some cases, depending on the damage. The openings are dime-sized and allow for insertion of instruments into the hip without fully opening and exposing the hip joint, so it makes it less invasive. In this type of surgery, the leg is held in a distraction by a machine to allow for room of surgical instruments and saline fluid is pumped through the hip at a constant rate to keep a constant pressure within the hip and help with that distraction. So in the picture here, you can see an example of one of the things done during surgery to help reduce further hip problems for people who have snapping hip syndrome. This is called a capsule closure, where the hip capsule, hip capsule is severed partially and then shortened to decrease the range of motion somewhat in the hip and hopefully allow for the snapping to be non-problematic if it returns in the future. So here are just some pictures of um, what's called a synovectomy. So it's cleaning up that um, inflammation, that synovitis. So this is before cleanup. This is actually inside my hip. So you can see all this red is inflammation and this is after. So it's quite the difference there. So the pink is the healthy tissue you want to see. So here I have a brief video of arthroscopic surgery. And just to give an idea of what it looks like inside the hip better and to see different tools being used better, um, this is actually from my hip surgery. So it is a little fuzzy just because of the converting format, but here we can see the saline there. And then this is the femoral head right here. And then you can see that inflammation over there. Yeah, right there. So it's actually pretty cool. Sorry if you're a little squeamish. So, and then it landed on, it's a little bit pixelated, but there is a tear in the labrum right there. So open hip surgery, typically with snapping hip syndrome, open hip surgery is not seen and is typically only seen in the case of hip replacement, as mentioned before, but it can be done if deemed absolutely necessary. The posterior approach is more often used for open hip surgery, and it's really more posterior lateral, as you can see from this picture, and because it allows for better access to the hip joint. Also with posterior or, like I said, posterior lateral approach, the incision can heal better due to location on the body. Also with an open hip procedure, the rehab protocol is changed slightly due to the type of incision used. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you've learned a lot. And that is all.